You're listening to the Ella and Leland Show, brought to you by Gopher Recording Studio, www.gopherrecordingstudio.com. We're making dreams a reality. Hello, Ella. How are we doing today? Good. We're doing good? Uh, aren't you so excited? Don't you feel a lot better than when you did when we had COVID? Yes. A lot better. So we're, we're pretty excited because this is episode five. Episode five. And I'm not quite sure what we'll talk about. We might throw a, a thing in about this and a thing in about that. Yep. <laughs> you know, anything we can think about. I know during the week, Ella, we uh, we normally go live on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And, and we normally don't have anything to talk about. And then all of a sudden, a, a subject comes up. Yes. A topic. And then, oh, there. then it's, it's 10 it's minutes the weirdest, later. It's the weirdest topic, too. It is the weirdest topic. Yeah. Like, we had, we already discussed this on the podcast about the way the roll of toilet paper should be on, right? We're still talking about that. I know, I know. <laughs> but it's a good topic to have, you know? I, 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 I guess. Okay. Well, I mean, what was, what was one of the other ones? Oh, we had about cereal. We had about, if you, if you put your, if you put milk in first, you're a what? Monster. You're a monster. I don't get that one quite yet, but I'm glad I'm not a monster. That's all I can say about that, right? Okay. Okay. And then, just this last Monday, we went up to Clark, and Leland had his last game. Yes. And he got in there. He did really good. Mm-hmm. He, he really loves that defense, but the other guy doesn't like his defense because he can't get the ball, right? Yep. Uh, so then, and then, was it yesterday? We, Mom and I went up to Clark. No, that no, was Thursday. Thursday. We went up to Clark, and I got my little clown car all, all yep. registered, right? Yep. I have a 2015 Fiat Sport. Yes. So uh, it's my little deuce coupe. <laughs> Ella, Ella was asking, what, what, what is your car? And I said, it's a little deuce coupe. You know, just like the Beach Boys. You've never heard that song, have you? No. She's my little deuce coupe. I can't even I've get the never... high. You don't know what I got. Right? Yeah, I've never heard that in my life. Oh, good music, good music. We're going to have to listen to a bunch of Beach Boys after this, right? She's cringing. Her face is, she's like, I don't think so. But you know, your mom had never heard of Roy Orbison before I introduced him to her. The I've music. never heard of that. Yes, you have. You have a, a pretty woman walking down the street. Oh. Yeah. And that was a bad impression of mine. But anyway, I got, I got a whole album for your mom, and she listened to that all throughout college. She did? Yes, and then when Leland was, like, really little, I'd listen to it. Yeah. And I'd go, uh, one, of, one of the songs I'd say, She walked away. And they'd go, wop, 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 wop. <laughs> it was pretty he? good, yeah. Oh, that's so cute. He How was old cute. was he? He was like one. Aww. Yeah. So a uh, precious memory right there. Yeah. It was really a good thing. Uh, so what else do we have? To, why don't right away, Ella, you tell us about the dolphin story? Okay, so each time I've told a story about, except for the first time, an animal saving a child's life. Now we have one about a dolphin. <clears throat> so... There was this girl, and they went on vacation somewhere, probably like in Florida, I'm pretty sure. If they're, yeah. Well, it would have to be somewhere somewhere, where there's an ocean, right? Yeah. And so, and they went scuba diving, and they went there to see dolphins. So they went scuba diving, and they got to see dolphins, and there was this little girl. Okay, hold on just a second. This better not turn into the movie we saw last night, which was 47 meters deep. Uncaged. Uncaged. Great and movie. Go no, watch not, it. No, no, no. I, I was scared. My wife was scared. For one, Ella, you should know this. I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> and all I'll say about this is we have sharks, we have the ocean, we have caves underground, and spelunking. Okay, go ahead, Ella. Okay, so there is this girl. She's not necessarily little, probably like 12, 13, anywhere around that age range. Yeah. So... They got to see dolphins, and there was this one dolphin, and that this girl followed it. And after a while, she had to go back to the boat, so then they went home. Well, not home, but they went to their rented house. Oh, sure. And they had a dock there, and on the last morning, the girl was like, I want to see that dolphin again. And so she got out 
she opened, you know, one of those big bins that they usually have around a pool to put all the stuff in? Oh, yeah, in? yeah. Like, I don't know, yeah. can you describe well, that? Well, we have one in our basement, too. Yeah. It's, it's just, uh, everybody knows. I can't think yeah. of the name right now, but it's, it's like to put your poison. It's like a little poison. tub, and then you can open the lid and shut it. Yeah. Yeah. So, there was one of those, and she accidentally cut herself on it. And she's <gasps> like, eh, it's just a little scratch. So, she got all the stuff out, started swimming. And at the time, she didn't realize how far she started swimming. And Are there sharks in this story? Because you got blood going, and I know what sharks like, and they like blood in the water. Okay, continue. You'll see. You'll see. So then she went there, and probably around somewhere between like a mile, half a mile, any of that. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was a football field length. 100 yards. Yeah, something like that. That's or long ways. Either that or a few. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, so she was about a football yard in the water. Okay. And she found a dolphin swimming, and it was the same dolphin that kept swimming farther and farther out, so she followed. She was, I'm pretty sure, around four football fields away. By the way, you shouldn't follow anything that far out in the ocean. The only thing that's going to catch you is a wave. Yeah. And then, so, um, she was out there, and then she finally caught up to the dolphin and then she realized that she was bleeding a lot more than she thought the cut was a lot bigger she was getting tired and she the dolphin left so she started realizing how far she had swam and tried to make it far enough to go to the dock and it was so early in the morning that nobody was awake so she made it she you was, shouldn't go swimming when you're 12 or 13 years old and no. not tell anybody. Just saying. Yeah. And so she started swimming, and she was really, really tired. And then when she was probably around, like, half a football field away from the dock, she noticed something was following her. She noticed that there da-da, was... da 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 <laughs> da da Right? Yep. Okay. There was... I'm pretty sure it was a shark following her. Was it a great white? It was either a shark or a killer whale, but I'm pretty sure it was a shark. Ooh, killer whale, those are big too. Yeah. So then it started following her. So she started swimming as fast as she could, and her arm started to hurt because she had cut it open, and it was about like um, around an inch gash, maybe more. I can't remember. It was either an inch or three inch, but that's a big difference. I envision this. Help me! Help me! Help me! Yeah, so she started... (laughs) like screaming and she was so close and she was getting super tired but at the last second all these dolphins came and started swimming around the shark or killer whale and they kept swimming around it and swimming around it and making all those dolphin noises and like (laughs) yeah and swimming up against it (laughs) and then finally they got the shark to leave and it was the same dolphin that came and helped her onto the land. Was she missing a tail afterwards, so her name was Winter? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's how the story ends. That's a great story. Ella. Oh, I, I have one more, actually, that we can do next time. Okay, uh, so next time you'll yes. have one. It's about uh, a gorilla. So I have to say, I don't know when this is, but Shark Week, have you heard of that? I don't know. Have you heard of that? It's like on TV the whole week. All they do is show shark movies. Oh, maybe, because I watched one in Watertown with my grandparents, actually my grandpa and his friend. It was all these shark movies, like Jaws, Shallow. Oh, yeah? All these shark movies, yeah. Was that Grandpa Lonnie? Mm -hmm. I can see him. Was it Weshy? No. It wasn't Weshy? Was it Marty? His name is Jim. Oh, Jim. James Blocker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I met him. He's a nice guy. So, uh, were they like slapping hands? They're like, yeah, that was nice. (laughs) Way to go, shark. Yeah. Like, um, like betting on the well, sharks. Well, the water at Watertown, the McDonald's there doesn't know how to count, and I was eating chicken nuggets. I swear, every time I get 10 chicken nuggets, they give me more. I mean, I'm not complaining, but they don't know how to count. Ella, I love you, but that was so random. It was. That was, that was like was, your mom random. It was. That was Cassie <laughs> random. If but, you want to know a scary fact what, about sharks. What's that? So sharks kill about six people a year. Right. And coconuts kill 14 times more people a year than sharks do. I think I'll take my chance. I'd rather get hit by a coconut 
than attacked by they're a shark. A, they're like a bowling ball. Oh, they're he- they're that yeah. heavy. That big too. There must be a lot of lot of nutrients in a coconut. Mm-hmm. You put the lime in the coconut. How, how is that? What? Have you ever heard that? You no. put the lime in the coconut and. Uh, sorry, sorry. People I are gonna be like, you that. don't know that song. But anyway, uh, people yeah. people know what I'm talking about when it when it comes to that. I okay, hope. I'm gonna ask you this real real quick, Ella, because you asked me this the uh, the other day. I did. This is a joke, and your Aunt Augusta Hagen would love this in Nashville. What joke is because it? Because it's it's about the clam. Oh. oh, not about the clam. It's about the oyster. Yeah. Um. At school. For Valentine's Day, there was this person handing out jokes on a card. They were all fishing jokes, and I told my dad, when an oyster meets an accident, how do they get it to a hospital? So if an oyster has an accident, how do they get it to a hospital? How do they get it to a hospital? Be prepared. Emotionally prepare yourself for a cringe joke. Okay. The clambulance. It's cringe. We had a ton of those. Mine was, what do you get when a scientist crosses a elephant with a fish? Yeah, I I don't remember, but it wasn't that good. No, it's swimming trunks. (laughs) They were all just really cheesy and cringe. I shouldn't invite your grammar in to tell jokes like that. We could be here all day. (laughs) Uh, uh, so let's talk about this Tuesday, the twenty uh, first. Oh, you're going to be having a wax museum. Yes. So, so what does that involve? So at the gym, at the old gym at two o'clock. I'm pretty sure it's two o'clock in Will Lake, South Dakota. Will Lake, South Dakota, at the school in the old gym. There's going to be a wax museum where all of the kids in my class. So all the fifth graders dress up as presidents and they tell them all about their life. We have a speech and then you can just come and walk around and see all of the presidents. Can we tell them what president you're going to be? Yes. Okay. First, I'll give you some hints. Um, I was... Born in the Ronald Reagan around the <laughs> Revolutionary <laughs> oh, War. Oh no, it wasn't him. Well, maybe he argued against the gag rule, but it was re repealed or reappealed. Appealed. And, yeah, yeah, and <laughs> I know some of these words. I'm on the city council, you know. <laughs> I I just I just I'm like, uh, yes. 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 <laughs> no, I, I do a little more than that. I think it over, and it's, yeah. a, it's a difficult job. But go ahead, Ella. Yes. So my president was born in the Revolutionary War. He, he traveled to France and the Netherlands when his father became um, Obama. ambassador. Obama. <laughs> no, okay. Revolutionary War. Revol- the American Revolution. Okay, okay. Um, and... <clears throat> Okay, this one is Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> um I he has four kids. His wife is Louisa Catherine Adams, and one of his children is Louisa Catherine Adams. Um Oh, isn't this a guy that tried like or had Nineteen. Oh, yeah. His wife was pregnant nineteen times in twenty-one years. Holy moly! I didn't include that part of my speech, though. Did she have a lot of miscarriages? Yeah, Yeah. because she had four kids in total. Oh wow! A lot of miscarriages. That's a lot of labor. (laughs) You know, (laughs) that's like that's like almost how how long did this guy live? Um, I don't know. He. He was the first president to. He was the first president where his father also held office. Um. All right, El, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause yeah. you right there, and we're gonna take this short break as soon as this thing winds up and yep. is ready to go. Yep. So let's count. To- You're listening to the Ella and Leland Show. Brought to you by Gopher Recording Studio, www.gopherrecordingstudio.com, where we're making dreams a reality. So where were we, Ella? Were we talking about... Yes. 
when he was born? Is that what we we're talking about? <laughs> he was about? born in 1767, I'm pretty sure. And um, he served in the House of Representatives for 18 years after he became president. So can you guess who he was? Would you like to do the honors of saying who it was? I forgot. Was it John Adams? Close. John Quincy Adams. Yes, I'm John Quincy Adams. Did he did he invent beer? Oh no, that he, would have been he, John Adams beer. He installed the first pool table in the White House. Is that right? Yeah, he, here's some fun facts. Okay. Um he wore the same hat for ten years. He had a pet alligator. He's, Whoa, <laughs> a pet alligator? What do you I mean you, you, you know, it, it it implies pet pet pet. pet, pet do you pet, think pet, he pet? pet the alligator, or do you think you just said, yeah. hello, you rolled over, or whatever his name was? You, you think so? Pet it. They're, like, you, there are really small alligators and oh. crocodiles, like this big, and you can hold them. So it never said how big the <coughs> no, alligator was. it never said how big it was, but I assume it was just really small, so because when, that's what people have. Then w- was he born in the South, like Florida or Louisiana? Because, like, if you're from, like, Nebraska... I don't think we Nebraska uh, uh, wasn't even part of that. Yeah. No, I don't think so. So um, he had to be from somewhere, Virginia yeah. or. And my friend thought this was so funny. I don't know how, but he swam in the Potomatic. Po, how do you say that? Potomac River. Pot- Potomac. Potomac River every morning to exercise, and my friend thought this was so funny. He swam in the nude. She she would nonstop laugh every well, time she how, read it. How else she swim? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. No, no, but back then they wouldn't have swimsuits. Right, and that was smart because then they wouldn't get it wet. Yeah, and then it would be ruined. I mean, like if you wore leather. Might not be a good sight if it was getting no. out of the river, you know. I mean, but, nope. you know, I guess he was confident, you know. Yeah. He graduated from Harvard and became a lawyer in Boston and then married his wife, Louise, Louisa. Catherine Adams, and they had a daughter named Louisa Catherine Adams. That's what confused me and my friends so much, because we're the same president, and we were like, wait, does he have three kids or four kids? Right. Yeah, because they're the exact same name. So are we, right, because yeah. now we're talking about John Quincy Adams, right? Yes. So was John Adams his son? I think Grandson? Was, I think it might have been his father. Right. I have a I have a, a question for you, yes. Ella, and I'm sure you're gonna get this. Yes. Who is famous for signing huge on the Declaration of Independence and now everybody says, Put your here. Have you ever heard but, that? No. Put your Hancock? John Hancock? I've never heard that. You've never heard that? No. Because he like everybody was signing real small and he went Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. he couldn't see, I don't know. I don't like when people do that, like in class, if we're writing a thank you note or something, right, and everybody's writing their signature, it looks so nice, and then somebody comes up and writes it huge, and then nobody else has any room. And, and maybe it's not that good either, huh? Yeah, yeah. most well, of the time. That happens, yeah. you know. You got to roll with the punches, I guess. Yeah. And um, shoot, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something about my president. Isn't that kind of funny? This whole week, we've had things in our mind that we were going to say. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we'd be talking about it, and we're like, uh, uh. uh. I, said, I said earlier this week, I'm like, I just forgot everything. I was like, two plus two is four. Yeah, two plus two is four. <laughs> How, now, talk about uh, trying to trying to keep keep things going, right? Yeah. So, so about your president. Um. Um, is it no more facts? You keep going, you keep going. Yeah, you're shooing yeah. me. You're going to hit me. You're going to start punching me in the face. Well, anyway, so we've been talking about John Quincy Adams, right? Mm-hmm. And he's your president. Mm-hmm. And she made this wig. Can I say a wig? Yes. Out of yarn, it's white white yarn. Yes. And then she's got, like, sideburns. I call them more mutton chops. Yeah. Down there. I made them, too. And Yeah, and that's out of yarn, too. So mm-hmm. that looks super good. Yep. How, how long did that take you to do? The wig took me like maybe an, a few, maybe like an hour to three wow. for the wig because I actually don't know how long it took me because I had to make all the pom poms by hand and then stick them on the wig and shape the wig to my head because it's out of paper. And then the beard, little beard, whatever you want to call them, um, I made those. They didn't take me too long. Because I just made one very large 
not very large, but one decent sized pom pom, and then stuck it on some tape, and then it worked. You know, people think nowadays yeah. that they have really weird-looking facial hair. But I'm telling you, the founders of this country, the first presidents, yeah. have you seen some of the, the, the beard styles that they wore? No. You haven't? Well, you've, I mean, seen, I don't know. you've seen John Quincy Adams with that thing. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe I should... I, I'm trying to grow a beard right now. Maybe I should take my <laughs> mustache no. and roll it in a thing. I already knew where you go. Oh, You're you knew? with that. Hey... Everybody out there, you remember Raleigh Fingers? Now that was a mustache. It, it was like the, you know how you think of circus yeah. entertainers and the, and the mustache goes, <laughs> yeah, curly cue. <laughs> That's what he looked like. He pitched for the Milwaukee Brewers back in like 1982, I think. I shouldn't know that, but I do. So there's your fact for the day. Yeah. Oh, we just had, we just last Sunday, we had the Super Bowl. Yes. And we had uh, Philadelphia Eagles yes. face the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes. Congratulations, Kansas City Chiefs. You lost me a bunch of money. <laughs> no, they did They did a very good job. I'm, that Patrick Mahomes, he's he's pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, and both Jalen Hurts, both both very incredible athletes. And I thought it was neat because you saw that the Kelsey brothers mm-hmm. played against each other in the Super Bowl. Yep. Can you imagine? You know, being being when you're little. Yeah. And thinking of, like, let's pretend we're in the Super Bowl. And now they were in the Super Bowl. Yeah. That was truly, truly amazing. Because they've both been in the Super Bowl mm-hmm. before. But this is the first time I believe they've faced each other. Yeah. So that's that's interesting. And, and I totally missed the, the Pro Bowl this year. It's usually the week before yeah. the Super Bowl. But I heard they had flag football. Hmm. I mean, that's getting a little, you know, like... How you doing? What sport do you think is overrated? <laughs> well, if you, okay, here's the thing. We're gonna go into this. Guys. You're listening to the Ella and Leland Show, sponsored by Gopher Recording Studio. www.gopherrecordingstudio.com. We made all your recording needs. So I'm gonna talk about this, Ella. This was another subject that you brought up. Ballet is a very difficult athletic thing. I, I oh, guarantee you it's that. The most, it's the most athletic sport above football. That's it. But it's not. I love you guys, above but football. it's not a sport. Yes, it is. It, it can be sporty, but it's not a sport because. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll Google it. No, right you're not going to Google But I'll tell you one thing. I told you this before. Now, if at the time they were they were doing their ballet stuff and they were shooting clay pigeons, now that would be a sport. I know we're hey, comment on this. What whatever you think, right? Comment mm-hmm. below and let us know. Is ballet a sport or just a really athletic feat? It's a sport and it's the most athletic sport above football. What what about wrestling? Don't you think? Wrestling? I I'm, said above football. Oh, well where do you suppose wrestling is? I'll give you this real quick. All right. She's going to check this out for us because we're going to see. Maybe it'll list, like, what's the top physical. But it's the most... Okay, I accidentally said sometimes it's the most athletic sport. It's the most athletic sport above football. Okay. I don't agree with that. I mean, I've never seen a ballerina take a hit. You know? Like, they don't, they don't, they don't have... All right. Okay, let's go. Ballet is both a sport and art and... Ballet is both an art and a sport because of the preparedness uh, participants participants. required to perform at their absolute level. Teaching that and tools incorporate both artistic and sport-based designs to ensure students remain interested and understand concepts before practically performing. Yeah, you can't see me shaking my head right now. (laughs) I'm shaking my head. I'm going, nope, nope. Because I could do ballet. Ooh. Easy, right? Is ballet harder than football? Let's search that. Yeah. That's on the surface, you may think football requires more strength based on solely on the amount of tackling and impact it involves. But when you look at it from the perspective of endurance and the biometrics involved in the jumping and landing, ballet actually requires more physical strength to perform at an elite level. Yeah, but you, you don't know how small them people are. If they got hit by a 300-pound man, they'd be done. But we're not talking about them playing football. But but they're, they're, you have to. 
How? You have to. Now, these football players, as good as they are, they probably couldn't stand on their tippy toes, right? No. Can you? Oh, yeah. You always. My daughter, ever since, my daughter and son, ever since they were babies and they started to walk, they walk on their tippy toes. Do you still walk on your tippy toes? Do you know that? Well, especially because in lower grades, like preschool and kindergarten, they would say, okay, everybody, shh. We gotta be quiet when we're walking here. Let's walk as quiet as a mouse. Let's walk on our tippy toes and quiet as a mouse. You know what that reminds me of? What? Do do do. How how is that not correct? Go. Do do do. do, do. do. I don't know. I, don't I can't know. think of it. I, I, I always play on the guitar. Here. Oh, this is the the cave of the mountain king. I think my don't son get told me. Don't copyrighted. That ain't it either. Okay, we'll just do that much. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah kind of like that. So that we, we had it because we're in the studio. I have a yes. guitar right behind me, so don't don't think whoa, how he's quick because <laughs> I just have it sitting right behind me, don't I? Yep. Okay, so that's cool. And then today uh, we had we had Lisa Bruley in uh, yesterday, and and uh, we're we're uh, helping to uh, get Sarah Rose and her song. And we're calling it Oh Lord right now. She might have another name for it, but it's a beautiful song. Yes. I showed it to you. And uh, I'm not a rap person, <laughs> but I can hear rap behind. Maybe just a maybe just a phrase, you know. But look for that. That's Sarah Rose. She's going to have this coming out, and Lisa Bruley is singing on this. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a great song. And uh, and I told her yesterday, because there are literally, 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 literally literature. <laughs> All around, right? What? Literature. Oh. You know what literature is? Yeah. Well, I call it literature. It's, I've got, so, I'm doing a song. I'm re-recording a song. This is from my rock youth. I'm redoing a song, a Weezer song called My Name is Jonas, right? So, I'm sure a lot of people won't like it, but I like it, you know? Right. And And so, it's, it's kind of in between my country thing and my rock thing. Same yeah. with, I, I redid Bon Jovi's, if you look up on Spotify, Better Roses. Yeah. And then, and then you can look that up. And so, is, have you heard that or not? No. You haven't, oh, you haven't heard that? Better Roses? I don't think so. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I'm on a lane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, she's got <laughs> that one. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm scrambling. I'm scrambling. I'm searching. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I've been out here transferring tapes over to CD, over, you know, oh, cool. take them, I mean, and that's, if you guys have that, get a hold of me so I can do that. Mm -hmm. It ain't, it ain't free, it ain't cheap, but, uh, it's, it's worth it because once yeah. it's digital, it ain't gonna tear up like these tapes. Yeah. And so I was doing these tapes for, uh, Carol Finstead, uh, my, my brother in Christ, Dave Finstead, who had went, went away to heaven to be with Jesus. Yes. Uh. He, we had been talking about this before, and, and I was pushing. I was asking him questions. And so I finally got around to getting this done. I know it sounds horrible. But I was on there, and I was listening to something. I think him and his son, Mark, then said. And it must have been when his son was six or eight or something wow. like that. And I think this song was a Bobby Bear song that had come out at the time. So this had to be the 70s sometime wow. what if and it is so beautiful with him and his son and i remember he asked him and it, you know what if what if you stop loving me and then he said well you better start loving me and he said he said mark do you love me yes daddy and i think that's so precious so that's it, it's just a nice i got a couple of these things to do for people to transfer but it's a great thing and i gotta say those tapes were in great shape well, that's good. So if you have a tape anymore, if you guys know what that is, you know, it's it's the uh, the the uh, evolution from the 8-track tape player. But what? They, yeah, I know she <laughs> don't know what that is. She don't know what videotapes are probably either. But anyway, so we're coming towards an end right now. But uh, Ella, is there anything else you'd like to tell um, everybody? Next week, I'll have a story about a child being rescued by a gorilla. Okay, no sharks. That one. No sharks. No, there's no sharks. Okay. Bye bye everybody. We bye. love you so much. We'll be talking to you later. You've been listening to the Ella and Leland Show. Brought to you by Gopher Recording Studio. www.gopherrecordingstudio.com Making dreams a reality.